doesn't matter whether something was written by artificial intelligence or by a human? You know, in some cases that answer is probably no, it doesn't really matter. If I'm just getting a list of information or facts and figures, or if I'm just consolidating information, then maybe AI as a tool is really useful and I can just use the content it generates in order to convey information. There's no problem with that. And there are a lot of great AI tools that can help me organize and formulate and do a lot of work with my thoughts in order to produce something authentic. But then there are times where it really does matter whether the content was written by an artificial intelligence or by a human intelligence. Things like if I'm asking somebody to reflect on an idea or I'm asking somebody to use their own thought process in order to understand a concept, in that case, I don't just want them using AI to generate that content, I want it to be something of themselves. And a good example of that is when it comes to something like a book or a novel, I want to know that I'm having a human interaction and not a human machine interaction. And that's where the sponsor of today's video, SciSpace, comes into play because they've created an AI detection tool that's absolutely fantastic. In a recent study of AI detectors, SciSpace did a very large comparison to multiple other AI detectors using large data sets, and SciSpace was able to get a very high level of accuracy at detecting AI compared to other different tools that are out there. You can see that SciSpace actually was in the high mid to high 90s, and compared to other tools that are out there, SciSpace definitely was the top performing tool. This study is available if you'd like to check it out. It has references in there as well. So I decided to run a few tests of my own. I wanted to see how it behaved with different papers that I might generate using different tools and techniques. So the first thing I did was create a research gap analysis using a specialized tool. Now I could have used SciSpace Agent to generate this gap analysis as well. I used a different tool, but the agent is capable of doing a lot of different types of research, literature reviews. You can see I can build different tasks within the agent. There's a lot I can do. There's a number of popular tasks that I can see at the bottom that will allow me to do things like create charts, build websites. I can use the agent library as well, or gallery. The gallery contains some different solutions based upon subject areas that combine some of these activities to do things like uh, I can, again, literature reviews, I can do things like patent claims extractors, I can do a landscape analysis. There are just a ton of things I can do that help me improve the speed, efficiency, and accuracy of my research workflow. So if I went to social sciences, you can see I can research uh, Sage journals, so I can go in there. Underneath engineering, there's quite a lot. Patent search, Google patent search. Um, and I can go back home here. Within the agent, I can even do deep research. So let's say I wanted to do some sort of task. Let's say I'll do uh, search papers. So I can click on the search papers. This is a simple task, so the prompt is quite simple. Some of them can be a little more complex, and I can put my subject into here. And what's really interesting is that all of this can be exported once I've generated the, the information that I'm interested in. So I'll do a quick research on virtual reality communication skill development in post-secondary students. I would want to put more emphasis. I'll do a deep research. I could load up documents that I might have. There are a lot of different options here. And what I really like about SciSpace is that the agent will then go through and it'll show me that it's going out and finding valid resources for the search that it's doing. And it'll start giving me that live activity output. So I'll be able to go in. In fact, if I click on DOI, it'll bring me right to the DOI. And that's really cool. I could download this article. Sometimes these will be, um, it will require me to sign into a different account for my library to get the, the PDF. But I can also approach my librarian, give them the DOI and ask for copies of it. And you can see I can download PDFs. Very, very useful. I then took that research gap analysis, brought it into ChatGPT, did deep thinking to try to humanize it. Then I went through and I did a regular type of essay through ChatGPT. 
Let's go take a look at the results. So here I am in SciSpace. You can see all the different tools that I have, including the AI detector tool. When I open up the AI detector tool, I have a number of different choices of what I can do in order to determine whether something was written by AI. I can go in and, and write something. I can go in and paste something in there, for example, an answer to a question, or I can upload PDFs. And when I upload a PDF, I can just drag them directly into SciSpace, or I can go and grab them from whatever folder I happen to have the PDFs in. And I can choose whether or not the PDF is scientific or non-scientific, or any of the text is scientific or non-scientific. And I did run several different analysis um, runs through different documents, different versions of documents to see my results. Uh, one example is, let's take a look at an academic detector where I put in my research gap analysis. I took out the citations and it was very clear that this had been written by AI. And what's really interesting in the report is that it will highlight those sentences that it thinks were written by AI and the degree of confidence that it has in whether or not that was written by AI. You can see the legend on the side where it's high AI, moderate AI, low AI. And what's interesting here, go back to my uh, PDF, so you can scroll down here, you can see all of the, um, in this case here, there's no annotations or no citations, sorry. There's no citations in this particular document. So that was, that was interesting because when I go into the original document, so this is using a specialized tool, it does say that it's essentially human, but if I look at the report here, you can see that this is a fairly short document and a lot of the text of the document does come back as being written by AI. But what happens here is because it has a lot of citations, it sees those citations as valid. So the overall report comes back and the same happens here when I do a little bit of humanizing of it through ChatGPT. The overall report comes back as being mostly human, but you can clearly see by reviewing the document, uh, the AI detector, that most of the sentences of the body are written by AI. And I went in and I grabbed this older article here, which is written in 2002. And when I did the AI detection here, it correctly identified it as essentially human. It does go through and, through and see a few lines that could theoretically have been written by AI, but because it was 2002 when this was published in a journal, we know that that's not the case, but it's a very low percentage of the overall document. So the, the analysis here that it's essentially human is absolutely correct. So it's very interesting to be able to go in and work with the, the PDFs. It is also important to note that it doesn't do a perfect analysis in terms of you still need to read the report to use your, your own discretion and to identify those elements that are identified as AI. So, and again, it's very easy. All you have to do is go into the AI detector here. I'll just go into the upload PDF and you can see I can, I can put all sorts of different uh, text in here. And when I, when I upload a PDF here, so I'm going to go and grab, this was written by ChatGPT. So this is a case where all I did was I went into ChatGPT and I asked it to write a non-scientific response or essay, thousand word essay on the Canadian perspective of the War of 1812. And you can see it goes in here and it's 100% detection. It was completely written by AI. So when I'm using a regular AI tool, not a specialized AI tool, it absolutely found out that this was written by AI very quickly. And when I'm using a specialized tool by using my own human capabilities to read the report, I can also determine what lines were written by AI or at least explore them further. The SciSpace AI detector did a really good job and it gave me the tools that I needed to explore documents further to determine how much may or may not have been written by AI. You saw that when I used a regular tool, it grabbed the AI right away. So if I was using ChatGPT4, ChatGPT5, asking it to write an essay, asking it to write an article, it immediately knew that that was AI if I went into an incredibly specialized tool, and these are tools that are designed to avoid being detected by AI, then it had a little bit of a harder time when citations were involved and references were involved. But once I removed the reference section, 
it absolutely identified it as AI and you could also see it highlighting all of the lines. So as a human, I still get that report and that's really one of the powerful things about this SciSpace AI detector. It, does, it doesn't just give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down, it actually goes through and shows me exactly where it thinks AI was used. And that was important, for example, in that one article that was written in 2002. It did see several lines in there, even though it came back as essentially human. It did see a few lines in there that it thought had been written by AI. AI didn't exist back then in the form that we know it today. So we know those sentences weren't written by AI, but maybe modern AI was trained on a lot of old articles and maybe just the formulation of that sentence was such that it came along, along as a little stagnant or a little bit formulaic, if you would. We won't worry too much about that because what it was is something that gave me the resources I need to do my own analysis in conjunction with the AI detector. Regular AI doesn't stand a chance though. It was detected right away. So it's something you might want to check out for yourself. SciSpace is offering a couple of generous discount codes for viewers of the channel and I'll put a link down below so that you can use those discount codes to get 40% or 20% off. Check out SciSpace. It's a great tool that gives me a lot of AI help with things that I'm doing and now it has an AI detector too. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video.